we're going to talk about different study designs for collecting data. Studies are generally broken down into two categories, observational or experimental. So in health research, studies are most often observational. A quick reminder to subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications when we upload new videos. Observational studies um, involve just observing people living their lives and recording the data, but we don't really intervene or try and control the situation. For experiments, we try and attempt to control or manipulate. For example, we randomize which treatment an individual may be receiving. Most of our review is going to focus on observational study designs. We're going to use this example here, looking at smoking and lung cancer, and asking the question, does smoking have an effect on lung cancer? And we're going to use this same general context to look at all these different study designs here. And some of them we're going to have to force in a little bit, but the idea is being able to compare and contrast the different designs that all use the exact same context or question. So here I've presented the different study designs in order of, generally speaking, from what provides the weakest evidence down to what provides the strongest evidence. Now this ordering is not absolute, and in some cases the ordering might change depending on the, the question or the context that we're asking, but in general this is an order that usually provides the weakest up to the strongest evidence. So the first is a case study or case series. So these tend to be a descriptive or exploratory analysis of one or sometimes a few people. Okay, so sometimes these even get called N of one studies. They're often very clinical and they usually involve studying rare or newer diseases. So what happens here is an individual has the disease, let's say in our context, an individual has lung cancer and we try and describe them and we hope through doing this we discover potential causes and this leads to having some testable hypotheses on what may be um, causing or leading to the lung cancer. The next are descriptive studies. And these are very similar to case studies. So here the goal is just to describe features of a population. Okay, so they're very similar to case studies or a case series except here we have a larger sample. Okay, so we might have a larger number of people who have lung cancer and we again look at them and try and describe them. And what might happen here is we might notice that um, people with lung cancer seem to be smoking a lot or maybe smoking more than the kind of general population. Okay, so this might lead us to a testable hypothesis. Do we think that the smoking is having an effect on the lung cancer? The next in the hierarchy is ecological studies. And these, an entire group of people, are used as a single unit here, a single observation in the study or analysis. So for example, we might look at the smoking rate and the lung cancer rate for an entire country. And suppose we collected that data, we might see here is the smoking rate, the lung cancer rate, and these are for entire countries. And we might notice that as the smoking rate is higher within a country, the lung cancer rate is also higher. Okay, and again, this gives us another piece of evidence that the smoking may be linked with an increased uh, risk of lung cancer. These sorts of studies suffer from what gets called, or what gets known as the ecological fallacy. And here, it's where inference about individuals is based on aggregated statistics collected for an entire group. In other words, it ignores the individual differences and treats everyone as being um, the average in the entire population. Okay, but they are a good stepping stone in providing stronger evidence. Next up is the cross-sectional study. So this one we can think of as being a snapshot in time, or in other words, it's a survey. Now a few features of these, some of the nice things is that they're relatively quick to collect and relatively cheap. And nothing in the research world is quick or cheap, but relatively speaking, we don't have to wait a long time to get a hold of the data. Um, we don't have to follow people for years and years. Okay, so these are things like really large health surveys, census data, these sorts of things. In this cross-sectional study, we might, amongst other things, ask people, do they smoke? Um, yes or no, or some measure of how much. Do they have lung cancer? Yes or no. Some of the negatives about this design is it lacks temporality. Um, one of the big negatives of these is that there's no time component, which means we don't know which came first. Did the person smoke and then develop lung cancer? Or did they get lung cancer and smoke after? How much time was there in between? Okay, all this is missing. One thing that we can get from cross-sectional studies is we can estimate prevalence. So we can estimate what's the prevalence of a disease. 
what percentage of a population say has lung cancer. Case control designs, what these are is we select cases and we select controls. In other words, we select people based on the outcome or the Y variable. So these are what we call the cases and the controls. So we select people in this example with lung cancer, we select people without lung cancer. And then we ask about their smoking habits. First, let's mention what's um, good or works well about these. They're good for rare diseases. So we can think of, if we wanted to study some disease and it's not very common, if we do something like a cross-sectional design, we might not capture many people with that disease and our data might not actually be good at trying to address the research question we're interested in. They're also, again, relatively quick and cheap. And again, this is in context in the context of the research world, right, where nothing is quick and cheap, but they're quicker and cheaper than, say, something like a cohort, which we're going to get to in a moment. Some of the negatives, again, is that they lack temporality. There's no time component to them. So again, we don't know, since we're looking back in time, we don't know, did the smoking occur before or after the lung cancer, how much time in between, and recall bias. We're asking people, say, who are maybe 80 years old and have lung cancer, we're asking about their smoking habits over their entire lifetime. And it's quite difficult to recall. So we don't get um, necessarily great quality data in that sense. Case control designs, we cannot estimate prevalence, we cannot estimate incidence. Okay, so that's another big weakness of them. So again, in the context of our example here, this would be getting people with lung cancer, people without lung cancer, and then asking them about their smoking habits. One of the nice features of this design is we don't have to wait decades and decades till someone gets lung cancer, right? If we look at a 20 year old who's a heavy smoker, there's a good chance they're gonna get lung cancer, but it's not gonna happen until they're in their 50s or 60s or 70s. So this is a good way around um, either dealing with rare diseases or having to wait a long time to get data and try and answer questions. Now, let's take a look at cohort designs. So these are where we select people based on exposure, the X variables. Right, so again, we select people who smoke or who do not smoke. We follow them over time to see the outcome. In other words, we select people who smoke, who don't smoke. Then this is a cohort that we follow forward in time, and we see how many of them develop lung cancer or don't develop lung cancer. Some of the nice things about this design is it has temporality, or it has some time component. We are following people over time, which also means we get good quality records. If we're able to follow people forward in time, we can record how much they're smoking much more reliably. We can record changes in smoking if they started to smoke more or less, or if they quit or if they started. Some of the negatives is that they take a long time. Right? If we're looking at smoking and lung cancer, we might need to follow people for 10, 20, 30 years before we see something like lung cancer showing up. They're expensive. Right? And again, this involves the following people over a large period of time. It's gonna cost money. And there's lots of follow-up issues. So again, if you're going to try and follow people for um, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you're going to lose people along the way, and this can uh, influence the results. From a cohort study, it's worth mentioning here, you get incidence. Okay? So you can measure the rate at which new diseases are occurring. One of the examples where a case control may actually be better than a cohort is suppose we're looking at a rare disease. Okay, so suppose we're looking at some disease that about 1 in 5,000 people get. Now suppose we get a cohort of 10,000 people and we follow them for a decade. After that period of time, we're only gonna expect about two people to have the disease. Right? Maybe none do, maybe four or five do. And we're not gonna have very many people with the disease in our sample and that data is not really gonna be helpful for um, estimating is this exposure harmful or not. Okay, so this is a case where a, a case control is actually a better or more effective design than a cohort. And I guess one more thing worth mentioning here before we move on, cohort studies can be prospective or retrospective. Okay, we won't get into the too much details here, but just to say it quickly, prospective is where we get smokers and non-smokers and we follow them forward in time. Retrospective cohorts is where we might look back in time for the exposure and non-exposure and then follow from there. In a cohort, we're selecting people based on whether or not they smoke, whether it's now or retrospectively. Now, one of the big challenges with observational studies is that people self-select, right? In this example, people choose if they smoke or if they don't smoke. Okay, and by doing that, that means that the smokers and the non-smokers differ in other ways. Okay, and this is what we're gonna to start to call confounding later on. So for example, the smokers might be older on average than non-smokers. The smokers may be working different occupations 
um, than the non-smokers, right? Or a different distribution of occupations. They may have different lifestyle habits and so on. These are one thing that we really need to deal with in all of these observational designs. Randomized control studies, they're very similar to cohorts, but the big difference here is that people are randomly assigned to exposures or to treatments. Okay, so in this context, this would be taking a, a bunch of people, say taking 100 people, randomly assigning 50 to smoke and 50 to not smoke, following them and seeing what happens. Okay, now this is obviously unethical, right? We wouldn't do a randomized control design in this um, context, but we're using this example to compare and contrast the different designs and how they would work. One of the nice things about these is that they balance out the confounders. Okay, so previously we said smokers and non-smokers may differ in other ways, like lifestyle, apart from just the smoking. If we randomly assign people to smoke or not smoke, then they should be similar in every other way. Okay, we've eliminated those other factors. Okay, so that's the one of the real pros of experiments, is that we don't have to um, worry about confounding. Some of the negatives can be long, they can be expensive, and we have to think of ethics. In the observational designs, people are just living their lives, we're observing and recording data. There's far fewer ethical issues in terms of giving people treatments or not. This is a, a quick introduction or overview to the different study designs, and we're gonna to start to lean on some of this understanding a bit more as we progress through um, analyzing data collected from these different designs. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn. Stick around guys, cause we got lots more. Hope you guys like the video.